Good evening, everyone, and welcome to episode 10 of Expressions, the podcast. Tonight, we've got a very special guest. We have Dan Preston, who is a musician and sound engineer. We're in for a treat this evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Episodes of the Podcast. This is episode 10. Can't believe we're 10 episodes in already. It's the 10 episode. Uh, tonight, we've got a very special guest. We have Dan Preston on the show this evening. Dan is a musician and a sound engineer. He's worked with uh, some pretty interesting people that we'll get into. But before we speak with Dan, I'll just say hi to my co-host, uh, Brian. How are you this evening? I'm lonely, Mark. I'm lonely. <laughs> <laughs> we have only two of us tonight uh, interviewing Dan. Um, Aurora, unfortunately, isn't here because her boyfriend, Andrew, it's his birthday. So happy birthday. Happy birthday, Andrew. Andrew. Happy, and, birthday. Um, happy birthday. And <laughs> also, uh, Ryan isn't here with us today. He's out for a drive with his wife, having a good time, enjoying uh, whatever we can enjoy these days. Because I think none of us are really enjoying everything, are we? We need a happy little driving. Happy, driving. happy driving. Get out there. This is what Shelly and I do all the time. Um, and that reminds me, Dan, does Shelly King sound familiar to you? Shelly King. Oh, um, it's not totally ringing a bell, but. Okay. So my wife, Shelly, um, yeah. apparently went to school with you back in the day. Okay. And, um, grade school or high school? I think it was grade school. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I don't know if it was high school. Maybe it was high school. No, it had to be high school. I what, don't know. What school did She's she go to? She's downstairs. Uh, she went to Newmarket High. Okay. Okay. Must have been grade school then. So I went to yeah. Grand Heights. Probably. Yeah. Anyway, I showed her your LinkedIn picture a few minutes ago before we started the show. She goes, oh, yeah, that, that's Danny. That's that's Dan. Yeah, a lot less hair, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, one day you're going to wake up in the, middle, in the middle of the night and be like, Shelly King, yes. I remember. Yeah. 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 I'll remember. I'll remember. I'm sure. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that, Dan, uh, Dan, Brian, well, Dan and I both grew up in Newmarket as well with Shelly, so... Uh, yeah, it's a, it was a small town at the time. I mm -hmm. yeah, I like to joke that uh, my parents, when I grew up, my parents lived on the edge of town, and now they pretty much live in the middle of town and they didn't move. That's yeah. exactly <laughs> what kept, we were too. We were right on the edge in. there, yeah. London Road and Young Street. You know, right on the edge, there was nothing there. Now it's just in the middle yeah. of everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, perfect. So, uh, Dan, welcome and thank you for joining us this evening. I think this, I think we're going to have a great uh, conversation here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, there's so okay. much to talk about. I mean, mu music. We all love music. Mark, you're you're a yeah. budding musician. I used to well, think I was yeah. trying to be a musician, <laughs> and uh, I played the drums. I played past tense. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, there's no room for drums in my semi. So <laughs> Brian and I have had conversations at length about the drums, but no, I'm more like a guy that collects guitars right now. I, mm -hmm. uh, I don't play very. I don't play very well at all. But uh, I play guitar because I like guitar, not because I'm good at it. Right. But. Uh, but that's it. So Dan, so you you play guitar. Do you play other instruments as well, or just the guitar? Yeah, I, I have. You know, it's obviously you can get behind a kit and and, and do a few things and bass guitar. Uh, and that and there's uh, the time where I fronted a band. Uh, so I was singing back uh, 2007 to 2011. It was from man of a band called Days Left. Okay. Um, that was kind of on the you know, the back uh, scale of, of uh, me trying to do the whole band thing. That was just about doing the process and doing th something I hadn't done before and like kind of testing myself. So, but that was a lot of fun. So, you know, um, so yeah, drums, bass, guitar, obviously nice. guitar, my main instrument, of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Everybody I've known who's taken their music to a higher level, played in professional bands and, you know, toured every single person I know who's done that plays multiple instruments. It just seems like you, you end up having to just kind of do what you have to do to, to get the job done a lot of times, in which case that's learning every instrument so you can do it right. Absolutely. Well, cause you know, it's funny because if you're, if you just have uh, that spark, I think when you're younger or any age or whatever, um, it's, you feel the need to get on multiple instruments. Um, you know, it, it, it really sets you up for later when you do decide to start, you know, uh, like getting into bands and start, you know, playing live because you're, if you know a little bit of drums, a little bit of bass, and, and, and as a songwriter, and just as a band member, you can more tune into what those people are doing that much better, right? Because you're on, you're actually physically and mentally understanding. It's not just something that's coming at you. It's something that's you're feeling right. it, yeah, totally. So it's a big advantage to learn multiple instruments, if, especially if you want to be a producer, songwriter, and take it to uh, you know not just be a you know guitar a guitarist, right? It's super important, I think. And it's just fun as hell. Yeah, and then there's oh, that, right? 
Yeah, Absolutely. you know, it's the odd time, like once a year or whatever, I'd go see some buddies and then they're jamming and they're playing cover tunes and I just go hop on the kit and, you know, bash it, Symptom in the Universe by Black Sabbath or something simple, right? <laughs> it's a blast. You know? Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I've uh, I've been privy to, uh, I've got quite a few friends that are, are uh, in bands or were in bands or whatever. You, you end up at those parties and it, they're always the best parties, right? You know, you know, a couple, couple of beers and... and uh, Jam parties rule. Love, love live music. I, I don't know how many times I saw you live in our youth. Uh, I mean, you were in a lot of bands in high school. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I know uh, there was there was one in particular. There was uh, there was play oh, dirty, play dirty. Yeah, yeah. this one and this 20. is actually this is a coveted yeah. autograph copy. Actually, oh, you got an autograph one. Yeah, I, did, yeah. I, so, I just found something. Give me a second here. You put a day. Check this out. I mean, these are kind of rare. This is. Uh, this one here is the cassette. Oh, the cassette. Right? Yeah. Yes. For those easily offended. Oh. Sorry. It's, yeah. yeah. There we go. But nice. That's funny. That's uh, yeah. that was, I, uh, the other guitar player. That was, uh, if you kind of zoom in there, that was his uh, his stepson. And it's really hard to see. Yeah. But he's, <laughs> my, we were 17, 18 years old here. That little four-year-old is giving the finger. And he's spell, spelling the F word with uh, those little like kindergarten block letters. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like talking nice. about uh, rebellious, uh, rebellious rock youth, yeah. right? You know? When yeah. was that recorded? So, uh, that was recorded in 1993. I'm just yeah. wondering if they'd let you get away with that today. No, no, probably not. You know, probably that's not, the thing. Yeah. We even did the little, we did that ourselves, a little parental, yeah. you know, things just, just thought, you know that we could cover our butts but it's not even it wasn't even a legal one we just kind of whatever we did we cut and pasted it and, yeah. <laughs> it we, worked. Did, we didn't care like, yeah, we never got in trouble well. so it's all what, good what yeah. i loved about music from from our, our youth and what something people won't understand now is there was the whole pmrc and tipper gore trying to ban music and and that's where all those warnings came from and and i remember yeah. uh, d snyder from twisted sister um, I mean, he show, shows up to the congressional hearing in a, in a tank top with his long yeah. hair, you know, jeans Oops. and a tank top. Yeah, I'm and, having a hard time with this. Uh, I'm trying to make your screen bigger, and I keep on cutting things out. So sorry if I. Hey, no worries, no worries. But, uh, what I loved was every time they put that warning on it, just it made us as as the consumer, it made us want it more. If so, I I would go to like the San the Recommend or whatever, and it's like if I'd see that label, it would automatically interest me. If I knew it was a rock record. Yeah. Didn't know the band or whatever. It could have been like, you know, when it was really little and it's like it was docking or, or something or whatever it was, you know, yeah. it's just, uh, I, I would, I would gravitate towards it. Yeah. So it rock, worked in the total like opposite rock, direction they wanted it to. So absolutely. hundred yeah. percent. I think with every single person it worked that way. So absolutely. Oh, yeah, for sure. No doubt. For sure. No. I, I, I remember, uh, Wasp, they had that song, uh, um, fuck like a beast. Right. Oh, I love to swear. Uh, sure. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, we're, this we're, is gonna totally fucking change. This is great. <laughs> yeah, we, we just need to keep it employer friendly, but it's exactly. you know, we we, yeah. we do have a, a parental warning. Um, but uh, I I remember uh, I was I used to buy albums and then I would I play them once and put them on a tape so I could listen to it in the car in my bedroom or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, I bought that the the twelve inch single of, of Fuck Like a Beast. Yep. And I was in the living room recording it, and my mom is on the couch, and she's just sitting there and, and she's having a smoke and. She's the song's going on and she's kind of bopping her head a little yep. bit. And all of a sudden she goes, Did he just say fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mommy did. She goes, Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that was it. Cool mom. Right on, mom. Yeah, she's, she's <laughs> pretty cool. Everybody loved my mom. She's uh, well loves my mom. She's still around. So right. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but, right. uh, yeah. Really yeah, music good. sure has changed a lot, though. I mean, when I was going through high school, I think we're all around that same kind of age group. Um, high school graduated 89. Um, you know, when that whole era, the thought of that kind of music at the time, I wasn't in that scene. I was like uh, Rush, Police, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, jazz, yeah. some Maynard Ferguson, um, a, a different vibe altogether. My cousin, sure. though, Mitch, was all into the kind of music you guys are talking about. And I used to look at it like I was so intimidated. It just... You know, it was one of those. Uh, it was it was a scary thing for somebody like me to 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 try and listen to. So yeah. how how do how are you attracted to that? Was it just like all of a sudden that's just what you were raised with? What was your first experience when you heard some of that harder stuff and thought, mm, "This is my vibe." Yeah, I'll try to piece it together. I, I I've said, actually told the story a couple of times, um, so I can definitely piece it together. Like, I think for me, like uh, uh, you know, uh, in my 
have this, yeah, I have my older sister and, a, and, a, and an older brother. They're three year, and five years older. Um, so my, my sister being a little bit closer in age and stuff, I think we, we hung out a little bit more. And it was all like, I was I'm just listening to what she was listening to, like the, uh, uh, like Duran Duran and all, you know, that like the British pop stuff and like uh, uh, Platinum Blonde, which is funny that I ended up working for, you know, uh, back in 2011 until the last couple of years. It's, so we've had some funny stories with them, but then uh, that's cool. It was my brother uh, was getting it was into the heavier stuff. He was and a cousin of mine. They were, uh, I know he really liked Def Leppard and Ozzy, right? And I was just like, I'm a little kid here. I'm like six, you know, uh, years old, and um, and then I just started hearing the stuff coming off his record player in in uh, his bedroom, right? Um, you know, you know, like stuff like like oh, like all that like that and uh, and like the Kiss. And obviously, and then the rush was there too. All that was there because it does kind of mix in. Rush did, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They 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 cross all boundaries that band. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I gotta admit it, not admit it, but I'm not that much of a, a fan now. I guess I still am, and I re respect the career. But it was it was Kiss for me when I um, was uh, watching. You know, like I guess MTV was just coming out and stuff. And I think I saw the video for uh, I Was Made for Loving You. Like the whole disco age of uh, you know the dynasty yeah. record or whatever, and this uh, and it was Gene Simmons, and then you know in the big lights, the big stage, the distorted guitar, Ace, you know like that, and then started diving in them, to see the, the smoke out of the guitar and the flames and the fire. So I gotta admit, as much as I like to say that I'm a musician <laughs> and everything, what really attracted me to it was the show, right? Seeing, uh, you know, that the big stage, big lights, you know, and that, and that feeling, even through like TV before I even went to a show, it's something that you can feel. And that's what really got me on the whole rock thing. I just like that feeling. And then, uh, and then guitars in general, love the guitars. And I love the sound of distorted guitars versus clean guitars or keyboards mm -hmm. or anything like that. That sound of a, you know, like that Angus Young in an A chord. Brown, there's the, there's nothing like that. I, it just sends shiver up my spine at six, seven years old. Um, you know, it progressed from from there, and, and then I, when I really wanted to be a musician, is hearing like Randy Rhodes on those uh, those Aussie records. That that guy changed everything for me. He, honestly, not even just um, down to the whole music thing. I think it's just like personality and the way I can kind of conduct myself because. You know, as I got into that, um, you know, just his personality, his humility, and just and just being a nice, humble, sweet guy, and the little chunks of interviews and, and stuff that we're that we have of him, um, you know, that guy really he just changed my look on everything I do. It's funny because even though I wasn't in that world as well, Randy Rhodes, I remember hanging out with my buddy Scott Hitchcock in Vermont, and he's yeah. playing me some sudden stuff, and he's telling me about Randy's story and how young he was and yeah. what a shame. And I'm just like, wow, you know, it touched me as well. So yeah, I think I tell you. yeah, love it. Yeah. And, it was, and I think we have a photo here. Yeah, we do have a photo like, here. That oh you, were my. About, you were talking about the flames with the guitar. And, there you and, go. Uh, so yeah. I grabbed this screenshot from uh, for the viewers at home. This is uh, or the listeners on Spotify. Um, this is a picture of Dan with actually a double necked flying V guitar. I guess it, almost like a W, a flying W. Big yeah. Marshall stack, but that the double neck flying V has a flamethrower on it, and there's a big yeah. blue flame coming off it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty wild. That was a pretty pretty popular uh, post of mine on Facebook a few months ago. There, that's yeah. for sure. No it kidding. Was. I bet it would be. It's awesome. Yeah. It certainly was. But, I was uh, telling Mark before we started, I've only seen one flamethrower live on stage, and that was at a wrestling event. Arrow, Arrow Star gets up, and he has his flame star, uh, flamethrower at Lee's Palace downtown. That right. was awesome. My favorite photo I've ever made. It was just yeah, awesome. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, by yeah. the way, I remembered. It's actually a brother that Shelly hung out with. Uh, yeah, because you guys are probably a little bit old. How old are you guys? We're, we're – it's the big five oh this year for both of us so. yeah. yeah right yeah. okay so um, i just turned 46 so we're okay. very close but yeah my brother don uh he's that's 50, it right so yeah yeah, yeah so it was yeah, don that sure. shelly shelly knew more but she knew of you through don of course yeah, right? yeah. of course yeah. yeah i was just a little pain in the ass running around causing trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ah, that's, that's what we do that's i was gonna say do. what's changed uh not not a lot nice <laughs> Yeah, that's my wife. <laughs> nice. 
So, so Dan, we have the, the backstory of sort of how you got into the music, and, and it's very similar yeah. to mine. I mean, I, I had an older cousin. He was into Rush and ACDC and uh, Killer Dwarves. You know, oh, and, yeah. and we, we'd go down there, and, and I'd disappear into his bedroom with him, and, and he'd put on all these rock albums and stuff, and uh, we'd get yelled at, turn it down! You know, it's too loud, and I just loved it. The louder it was, the better, and I'm to this day, I'm, I'm the same. It's got to be loud, you know. They say uh, between like the ages of uh, 13 and 17 is when your music style locks yeah. in. Absolutely. And you listen yeah. to that same style for the rest of your life. And I'm still yeah. living, listening to that music today, oh, yeah, except for sure. Now I've added tool to what I listen to, which yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank God for tool. But yeah, yeah. Well, for sure. Those, are, those guys are one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh, kind of, yeah. it, it's, yeah. it's funny. I find it, like you said, you have your core bands in your teenage years, early twenties and you'll let some in, you know, to the bubble over time, but you know, it, it's, it's a pretty, strong edge bubble you know like yeah. a, a, you just got your core there and yep. you, yeah, you compare everything neat. to it yeah. i just i love the bands that I, I grew up on and it's just like i'm just as much of a fit like say like aussie fan and and, and uh you know yeah. that i was when i was a kid right yeah. you know and many other bands of course yeah. right you know yeah, yeah. so so oh, i have a i have a friend here um so <laughs> you're as as a a budding musician as a person you, you wanted to pick up the guitar what was there uh uh, a couple of artists or, or like a riff that you said, Oh my God, I, I got to play that riff. I want to get a guitar. And that's, that's well, why that, you that was the, yeah, it was a Randy road stuff. I stole yeah. uh, my brother's die of a madman record. Yeah. Um, because I actually heard the like, blizzard of Oz was the first one, but, uh, the, uh, the one I heard first was die of a madman. And, yeah. uh, and just Randy's guitar work on that is, yeah. uh, absolutely incredible and what they did like they were there's like four or five weeks they record that over in england yeah. and just and, and wrote it and you know um his guitar work is it just totally and it made me i just said i had to play guitar like yeah. hearing all that stuff like over the mountain and it's like uh, song believer uh, yeah. riffs and then going back to blizzard like you know obviously like the crazy train i don't know and they're just such good iconic like not good just you know phenomenal uh, guitar classics from an absolute young genius, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're they're riffs that really stand the test of time too, right? They're yeah, they're they're my uh, they're my actually. It's funny you talk about Ozzy. I listen to satellite radio in my car, and Ozzy's yeah. Boneyard is quite often on, and they play a lot of old Ozzy, a lot of old Black Sabbath. Oh, well, for sure, it'll never go away. Yeah, if it never my, goes away, I don't I don't like this planet anymore. <laughs> well, this is what do you think about some of the things that are happening these days? Like you you look at all the music. Um, mostly uh, TikTok videos that all of a sudden there's a catchy song and next thing you know, it's what everybody's listening to or the Korean pop or like, yeah. is, are, are you of the school of all music is good music and, you know, just going to speak to everybody differently or do you have a couple bands you're just like, oh man, this is shit. I can't, hit, I can't. Hit. Obviously there's stuff I don't like, but I've always kind of said, it's like, you know, what makes a good song is a good song. Uh, you know, like if it's, you know, if it's a death metal band or, you know, a Brit pop band or, you know, you know, whatever it is, if it's, you know, if it's got, if it, if it grabs you, if it gives you a little goosebumps, right. And it's going to look and you're singing it or you're doing that drum beat and you're shaking your head or it makes you move. Right. And it's good. You know, yep. I've had stuff that it's, you wouldn't even think that I, I like, you know, like, I mean, it was like not even a year ago. It was at the start of COVID and we we're home a lot and, and uh, um, my wife, you had no idea, and I've been with Ann since, a, you know, for 25 years, and it's been in Jewel, like her first record, right? Just while I'm just doing dishes, and she's like, what? You know, <laughs> right? And it's like, they're amazing songs. Like, she's a killer songwriter, and yeah. her voice is amazing, and, you know, uh, so yeah. that's it. It's a good song. It's a good song, it, it, yeah. whatever style, you know, but I just gravitate towards the heavier stuff, you know? And, uh, you know, just because it's just, that's what's up my alley. That's what really grabs me, right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I've been known to uh, to shed a tear to an American Idol singer once or twice. But, uh, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> well, that, well, that's it. Because some of those kids and uh, get on there and mm, they're just, they just hit those right notes and they're just powerful. And you know that they're just, you feel it coming out of them. It's like, good for you. And you yeah. just you get that, you get that feeling, right? That pride yeah. swell. That Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I heard that. I don't I don't watch a lot of TV in general, um, hardly at all. But uh, you know, the odd time just seeing like on you know on Facebook or whatever, just those little clips and meme clips of you know of uh, of things, and I, I get impressed every time because oftentimes those little ads and clips or whatever you see just scrolling on Facebook are all just like you know 
the kids that are really giving her, right? You know, so I'm seeing all these good clips and, and it, it is impressive. You know? Have you seen the Nuno Betancourt stuff that he's been doing through, since COVID? Where he's doing online live yeah. or, uh, videos with other musicians and it's mixed and it sounds like, oh my God, good. I've seen, yeah, I've seen a couple. And the one that got me the most, and it was one uh, Nuno got uh, Nancy Wilson, they did Barracuda. That's the I one. I think it was Taylor Hawkins on drums. Yep. I forget he was doing bass. I'm going to have to look that up. Yes, you just will. ripping it. Right? Yeah. Nuno, Nuno is, he was a big influence in that time of, uh, yeah. you know, of, of picking up guitar. You got to think, this is 1987 or 88. You know, and there's, you know, Extreme was going like all, it was that big shred era, right? So he was one of the guys and he, he still is, he's brilliant, that guy. Absolutely. Loved Absolutely it. brilliant guitar player, songwriter, producer. Really good. What was it like for you starting to play with some of the musicians that you loved? Um, what are we listening to? What was that? Good Sorry, time. that was uh, a quick phone song rang. in. Oh. Phone, phone, phone rang here beside us. So I was trying yeah. to mute it. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So did you mean like uh, starting to work with the, the bands, like doing sound and all that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I guess um, I'll go back right to the start. My first like, uh, band I started actually touring with because I worked with for production companies uh, for a long, long time doing sound and then started to go to my own and I, started, I hooked up with the Platinum Blonde guys. I got that gig. And what that was, not that I was a huge fan of them, you know, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh it was just really neat. It was a whole retrospect. It was like a the full circle kind of thing. And that really gave me something to go, hey, there's something here and just work directly with artists. Um, it was really cool because they treated me well right away, like very well right away. Uh, they're, they're great guys. Um, very driven. Mark Holmes is a su superbly driven guy. Um, so it was really cool. Is I got good inspiration from them. Just what I was doing. We were jet setting and flying out, you know, everywhere every weekend and doing gigs. So that really just gave me that uh, little boost of like, okay, this is a start to something, right? Um, that's over. You know, it's ten years ago now. So you know, to answer your question directly, how has it been? It's 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 great. It's an honor every time. You know, uh, especially. You know, coming down the road and working with Big Rack now is my main band and basically the only band I work with. Um, it's an honor. It's a total privilege. And um, I can't say enough about the whole band. And then obviously, Ian uh, Thornley, um, especially, he's <laughs> the guy's an absolute gem. He's one of the best guitar players, best singers, best songwriters I've ever, um, you know, listened to, not just met or, or whatever. I just really respect that guy beyond beyond words. That's why I'm trying to find words right now and kind of stuttering. He's just uh, he's an awesome individual um, and huge inspiration. And That's so I'm great. very lucky to be working directly with him. And he's just a pal now, and it's 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 funny and cool and and an honor, right? Yeah, but it says a lot about what you've done as well to have somebody that good and that respected wanting to work with you. I mean, that's that's got to be a huge pride factor. Oh, well, absolutely. You know, um, you know, especially that just working with them, it just started, I was uh, kind of like a fill-in, right, uh, too. And I just thought it was just going to be a couple of months on the road and that. And things change over time. When you live on a bus with a bunch of other dudes, there's lots of talking going on and lots of opening up, right? So, yeah, yeah near that end of that run, you just like, Dano, I want you to be my guy, right? And uh and I don't say no to that, you know. No, 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 no. good for you. Absolutely you? not, you know. Um, I just, I didn't, I almost didn't know what to say at first because I just thought I was just kind of filling in for that tour uh, on that, but he, he wanted to make some changes and stuff, and he was just liking the vibe, and, you know, I'm just lucky to get that call from him directly, you know, right face-to-face, -face, you know. Awesome. So very cool, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So you've worked for Platinum Blonde, Big Rec. Who else have you toured with? Um, yeah, uh, back, uh, 2014, I started working with April wine. I was with right. them for, you know, uh, three years. Um, that was super cool because for me, that was my first, uh, uh band that I actually, uh, started tour managing, uh, with, you know, I had done a lot of production or, uh, sorry, uh, like, a uh, warehouse management and operations management through Frontier Sound and Light, uh, for many years. And, you know, so I, good organizational skills and, and all that. And I, I came highly recommended to miles and he called me directly. Um, and, uh, so started, uh, working with them. That was three years. Um, after that is, uh, right around. Yeah. Uh, it was exactly the same time as, um, around 2000, 
six, 17, I guess, started working with uh, I'm Mother Earth and Finger 11 right at the same time. Um, nice. So that was pretty cool. This is like, you know, both of those bands to, to take me on. Uh, enjoy working with them fully. Um, I do sound for them any any time now, but things changed a little bit um, down the line. Two thousand late two thousand eighteen into nineteen, um, got a call from uh, Three Days Grace Management, and they were looking for a monitor tech. Um, so I, I had to think for a couple of days because this was a good opportunity because those guys fucking work, man. Like I know I'm making a paycheck if I'm working for Three Days Grace. Because they, I, I, their work ethic is second to none. They pound out records and they tour and they go everywhere and they're relentless and they they do all the media. They 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 interact with their fans. They they just their ball of wax is like I can't even like it's this big like it's crazy. Um, so I had I I felt like I had to take that job, even though it's like um, uh, it was in a position that I don't normally do. Like I'm a front of house tech and I was tour managing. Like doing on stage monitors and stuff, like which I have done many times in the past at festivals and for the platinum blonde guys at the start. Um, so it was comfortable enough doing it, but it just it's it wasn't my passion. When I'm at front of house, like it, it's it's a totally different ball game, right? And it's uh, you know so um, you know I had a great time with them. It was almost a full year. Um, did a, a Canadian tour. Uh, a bunch of fly out dates, you know, for festivals down in the states, and then a, a big run with Disturbed, their whole North American uh, run for the uh, Evolution tour. Wow, uh, it was incredible. Um, I have so many wicked pictures because I made sure I got up, you know, before load in. I like, uh, you know, uh, you know, it was like seven thirty or eight a.m. Even if we went to bed and you know late from having a couple of pops or a glass of wine or something or fifteen. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I get up and I go into the arena um, when they're just getting the PA up in the air, and I go up in the up in the rafters there and take the big old selfie, right? So I have like selfies of every single arena that we did. Nice. And their, their stage setup was very cool, a big, huge uh, projection screen. It was like this triangular step down stage, almost like an arrow, you know. Uh, and it's just it's just very very cool. Uh, and I learned a lot on that. So like I said, I was not. You know, um, I'm a monitor guy. Oh, sorry, I'm a front of house guy, and, and doing monitors on that, like the the uh, disturbed team. Uh, it was a guy, uh, Aaron, and uh, it, uh, there was uh, Aaron and Ashton. Um, uh, they were both great, great guys that actually helped me out a lot on that tour. You know, and just to make sure I had things stable for the guys, right? Cause it was weird setup, and it's in ears and big arenas, and they're, they're so far apart away. Like one guy's like. Timbuktu and the other guys back over here, so it's hard monitoring that. So hmm. got the whole camp, the disturbed camp, the, like band, crew, management, all all really great guys. Um, so after that, I guess yeah, that was that's when the big rec call came up. So I think I'm caught up here in the bands that I've worked with, you know, to date. Oh, that's so, awesome. That's wow. awesome. And I remember seeing a post on Facebook. I think it was you did a show in Madison Square Gardens. Is that correct? Yeah, and that, was, and that was like one of your one of your bucket lists. No, it's, it's a, like I mean, it's everybody's every production yeah. te tech. When you step into the gardens for the first time, yeah. you know it's. Uh, I honestly got like the willies. Like I got that super chill. Like you know, like all the ghosts of, that are in the hall there just walked right through me, right? And all those performers That's that are cool. there, that I've been there, and it's really neat. And a lot of people don't see it. You'll, you can see pictures online, but a lot of people that just attend that. Um, arena for, for events. Don't see like the back halls where they have, you know, um, like the pictures and dates and plaques and stuff of all the performers. And it just lines like the whole back hallway into the offices, into the green rooms. And you're just, you know, and you see pictures of like, you know, Billy Joel and Elton John, and mm. Tina Turner and you know, Motley Crue and, and just all everybody, right? You know, and you see their pictures performing at the gardens and you just, you just, your breath gets taken away. Um, actually, you know what's funny? I think I have that picture on my phone here. Did I actually save it? I might have to look for it, but uh, maybe in post or something, you guys could pop it up. But yeah, yeah send it to yeah. us. Yeah, we'll take if you find it, send it to us. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, yeah, it's just because you know, like everybody that knows that building can see from the pictures, right? Because they have those big like planks and they're like it's basically like wood, and it's that, that design, like there's no other building like it in the world, so. You see that selfie? It's not just an arena. You're like, oh, that's that's MSG right there. Right? Yeah. 
That's yeah. awesome. So do you have other other bucket list venues that you haven't haven't uh, worked in yet that you want to? Um, yeah, I guess the, one, the other one was the forum, which we did. It was the first day to that, that disturbed tour. Um, yeah. and, uh, and that's another cool one where the hallway, where all the trucks come in, it's a huge, huge hallway, big ramp down into the arena floor. And all the bands are like spray painted, like stenciled of every band that's performed there. And this is a humongous hallway, right? So, and you start reading that and it's just like, holy crap, you know? Uh, so the forum is great, especially to start. Uh, sorry, it was the second day. We were in San Diego the day before. So the forum in L.A. Um, so, yeah, I guess like the big ones, are like, you know, I've been overseas a lot, doing a lot of touring over there. It's just some one-offs uh, and stuff. So obviously, like, to do the cool ones like, like Hammersmith Odeon or, 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 or do Donington with a big band, like, on a festival and, you know, all those big, uh, big huge stadiums and stuff, right? That's uh, – you know, some pretty it'd be some pretty cool uh, stuff to do. You know, I've done You've some got lots of time gigs, but lots of time to do those. You've got lots of time to do those. Sure. Yeah, it's yeah. all coming. Yeah, it's all coming for sure. You know, so but yeah, just like the the big stadium stuff because I've done I've done a few large large like festival gigs like fifty sixty thousand, but not like you know not those like big hundred thousand plus uh, gigs. And it's uh, so yeah, I used to think like you know do. 15,000 person arena. It's like, I've, that's it. I've arrived. And then it's funny because then it goes up and up and up. It's like, you know, it'd be cool to do 25,000, 50,000. And then you want that 100K, right? And so I just think, you know, being in front of house and just doing one of these and doing the 360 and looking around, I, I, geez, I hope I wouldn't crap my pants and have to sit in it for an hour. In front of house while I couldn't even imagine. Couldn't even yeah. imagine. My yeah. wife and I watch a lot of wrestling and it's just, I'm envisioning I'm a like a. Too. Oh, are you nice? Like a, like a WrestleMania moment with like 103,000 people. That's it. Yeah, in the Silver that's, Dome, right? Like, yeah, that's it. I think that's uh, why, honestly, I'm a fan of wrestling because, like, um, the production is this, insane. The production is, it's, I tell my wife this, she should be like, how, how can you watch this? Right. And I'm just like, <laughs> listen, it's like, it's, it's perfect man's like sport, right? Like, you know, it's a, it's, you know, it's fighting, right? There's a little bit of drama because even I don't care what anybody says, we like a little bit of drama, right? Yeah. Uh, and then it's half rock show too, right? Totally. There's fire, there's lights, you know, uh, there's, there's props, all that stuff, right? Back mm -hmm. in the back in the early day too, like the attitude era when it was like, you know, rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin and all that. They would do some crazy stuff. Like they would like smash Lamborghinis into into trucks just saying that was the owner's vehicle to create the story and you know, like but the Vincent Man concrete in the, in the Corvette and, up and he's supposed to be inside <laughs> it. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. that's the thing. There's a comedy to it that, that I love as well. Right. It's a lot of fun, but you probably watch it from a production side of things too. Like Shelly does a lot of um, sure. tribute Elvis tribute shows. And she had, she had worked stage management for a lot of different tribute shows. And yeah. uh, she does the sound for Barry wrestling when we go up North. So she, she's always watching wrestling for cues and for, you know, missed cues and for sound cues and mm -hmm. you see it from a different angle, right? You see it from oh, yeah. the production side. So I would imagine like with your experience, every production you see, you're kind of tearing apart a little bit in your head. Like what, a little bit. Go? I try not to, I really try not to, uh, because it's just like, I don't want to be that kind of a production snob guy. Right? Live in the moment. Yeah. Just enjoy it. <laughs> exactly. Just enjoy yeah. it. Um, I find, I don't, I find it harder when I actually go see a band in concert. That's when I'm really like, have a hard time, you know, just shunning that and then putting that away because that's that, that's right here, right? The wrestling thing is just a fun thing that I'll, I'll see, yeah, like, especially when they because I know the moves so well, right? It's, it's, it's quite funny. Like when they botch a move, right? When someone doesn't apply a sharpshooter correctly, I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> You're doing it wrong. <laughs> you got to put your leg around here. You know? It's like, it's not like crisscross. You have to, the leg's got to be perpendicular to the other one. And like, you know, nice. um, so I really wish you, Ryan was here for this conversation. Ryan is a, a wrestling <laughs> podcaster. He's, so, oh, he's, 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 he's going to be sad. You know what? It would probably, we'd stop talking about music and it would just go to wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so this is probably okay. You know, yeah, we'll probably be a great fun. guy, Ryan, but this is yeah. probably a good thing. Ryan's a great guy for sure. Yeah, oh, um, for sure. I have a question for you. You, you work full time. Like I, I have a full time yep. thing where I do my work at Henry's and so on and so forth. Um, but I like to make photos for myself. It's, it's my enjoyment. Obviously you have two, careers going yeah. 
right? Yeah. You've got your your product, your your stage management, and all your music career, but you're yeah. also working full time. What what is it you do full time? Well, right now, especially because of COVID, um, I work at Music Pro in Barry. Um, we do a lot of stuff. Um, my main thing is doing like AV install, right? And so right now, just to keep bread on the table, I'm going into churches, schools, auditoriums, and stuff, and uh, upgrading their you know, PA and communications systems uh, and stuff right now. Um, it's cool. I've learned a lot, you know, because I haven't done a lot of install type stuff, but it was kind of up my alley because I just was, before I started touring directly with bands and doing tour management, I do a lot of system tech stuff in the greater Toronto area. Um, just like, you know, down at like Woodbine Park, I go down with the truck and 10 guys and, 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 and be a kind of the head of that to make it happen, or at least one of them, you know, it'd be multiple guys sometimes. So, you know, uh, I was lucky enough to kind of uh, pop into that um, for COVID. And luckily, I, I actually took the job on a couple of months before COVID. So it's kind of funny like uh, how it worked out, you know, because I don't think I would have got this job post, you know, the start of COVID. It know? is weird how things work out that way. It is strange. Yeah, I've, all, I've yeah. thought of it. So I'm very grateful to have that because, honestly, that's what's it's keeping the lights on, right? You know, and keeping uh, uh, my household, you know, normal. Um, so I'm very thankful for that. Um, we also, uh, uh, when we run out of, uh, stuff to do like uh, the, uh, like the AV install, um, the owner has either me or a couple of guys, sometimes just me, um, remodeling the store and stuff. And I've been doing that since the last couple of weeks. So it's actually been quite awesome and rewarding. Like, uh, he just kind of lets us, uh, add it and we've been uh, like basically redoing all the displays. He's got a whole bunch of new guitars in. We got like four new like Fender Custom Shop guitars, you know, that are like fifty five hundred bucks each. That we, you know, basically put up way up in the wall. We got them nicely displayed, and it's, and so I get to check these things out too. Because I'm such a you know guitar, you know, I'm a guitar player, but I'm a guitar fan. Like I just love the instrument. I love the beauty of it. Not it's not just a, a bit of playing the thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I've been really lucky and fortunate to have work and and work that's been fun. You know, um, I do, I do enjoy it, you know? So, um, now, uh, when shows start, it's going to be about balancing those two because that's what I really haven't had to do yet. That's what I was just going to ask you, okay. you know, and I want to keep doing it. Um, you know, because it's just, it's, you know, it uh, makes life very busy, but if I can, you know, um, work during the week and I have, you know, a couple of weekend shows and some small runs. Cause when I, uh, Ted at music pro, he's a, He's a sweetheart. He's a great guy. And he's, he said, Hey, if you got a tour, just, you know, give me good notice and go do it and then come on back. Right. So that's great. Um, I'm really yeah, lucky, that's awesome. you know, so I want to keep, even though it'll be stressful on the weeks that I'm doing some weekend fly out shows and I have to come back and go right to work, you know, it, it, it'll be stressful. I'll be tired of shit and stuff, but uh, it just, uh, it'll be worth it in the end. I just, I feel like I owe that to the company. Right. And, uh, you know, I like that. And it's good. I got to start saving for retirement. I'm starting to get old. So <laughs> <laughs> I feel your pain. Yeah. yeah. Um, so go so, ahead, Mark. Yeah. Now, now that I'm starting to see, uh, you know, uh, you know, tour dates and things like that for, for yes. bands popping up, uh, mostly in the States. Uh, sadly, um, nobody said they're coming to Thunder Bay yet, but, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but have, have you had anything come up yet for, for Canadian dates or flyouts or? Anything? I do luckily. And, uh, this would be a segue into another band that I'm working with. Um, starting this Friday, um, I have, uh, some stuff with, I got three shows coming up, uh, with, uh, JJ wild. I don't know if you guys have heard of her yet. Um, she's an upcoming artist. She's had actually two number ones in the last year during COVID, like, uh, through like rock radio and pop radio. She's kind of like a, you know, a hybrid artist. She's got a real rocky sound, but she works in the, in the pop market too. So their management contacted me last year. I was supposed to do a show with them, kind of feel it out. Um, that didn't happen because of COVID. Um, so here we are. Um, and we got some, uh, um, uh, some tapings coming up for like the SoCan and Indie Wards. So I'm kind of TM in front of us uh, for them. That's coming out really soon. So that's great. It's a show, yep. you know. These are this little, they're all they're like little one song shows, but at least still I'm bringing a band to a venue, getting them set up. I'm doing my normal role with, you know, the um, the production staff, the house production staff, and it's like we're doing a song, getting them out of there and going home. So it's going to be the normal role of the day. So I'm happy to go do it just to actually go do that. Like I, I miss it something fierce, 
you know, for sure. So that's coming up. And then uh, just announced last week, I'm doing a run with Big Rec. Uh, my boys, uh, starting July 1st, we are, um, we're, uh, yeah, we're doing a live stream from uh, Hamilton on Canada Day. Um, July 2nd, we are doing a drive-in show in Peterborough, Ontario. And then July 3rd, we are at the City View drive-in uh, down at the docks in Toronto uh, to end that little run. So we're going to hop on a tour bus uh, for three days and, uh, and go do three shows. And, yeah, it's going to be lovely. That's that's cool. How, how do the drive-in shows work? What uh, like People are literally in their cars? and Yeah, it is yeah. literally what you d- just think of that name and add a, add a band to that. It's exactly what it is. So it's full production. It's a band. Um, well, let me let me back up a little bit. There's two different versions of it. There's like a live drive-in, and then there's just a drive-in uh, show. Like, say, Metallica and Three Days Grace last summer, they did a drive-in show, but it was – basically at a, like a full event that they taped, you know, live, full sound stage and the whole bit, and then they broadcast it, right? Um, okay. You know, so they were live, but it's just, you know, uh, but it was just broadcast, so it was just like you could go, like, you know, to any drive-in around here and, and watch it live, right? Uh, for the ones that I – for these ones coming up and the ones that I did with Big Wreck and the Trues uh, last year, I forgot to mention them earlier, you know, I was with them a bunch last year. Um, but uh, – these ones are, yeah, it's full production. There's a PA there. Um, we got to keep it a little bit quiet. Um, but it's, uh, you know, full production, big stage, big lights. Um, and it gets FM broadcast uh, to uh, everybody's carts. So they're just lined up. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah um, and what a good idea. Uh, I'm sorry? What a good idea. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know what? And it's just, uh, uh, I thought so right away too. Um, but then I was just like, it was like, oh, these shows, and I was like, oh, this is going to be so different, and I was kind of negative about it, but then as soon as I did one, I was like, you know what? If this is the only thing we can do, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. Right. They were a lot of fun. They was strangely just unique and different, so it was, you know, and for me, it was a challenge because we're FM broadcasting, right? So I'm not just listening to that PA in the, you know, at, you know in open air. Basically, the PA was set at like, you know, 85, 90 to B. And then I had near field monitors like you would in a recording studio, right? And headphones. And that's what I was mostly listening to the whole night uh, while I'm mixing their hour and a half long set. And that's what was getting broadcasted out to uh, to the cars. Hmm. So it's, uh, it's it was unique, right? And then some, some of those shows that we did last year uh, were definitely more challenging than others. Um, you get the odd person that... Uh, doesn't know how that process works because it's new, right? And we have basically no PA, and I got guys screaming at me, you know, and they're in their cars going, we can't hear Ian's vocal, right? <laughs> you know, I'm like, there's no PA. <laughs> like, you have to go listen in your car. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like. Well, know, they're just the standing things. outside their car. Li- yeah. Yeah, okay. they're just standing inside the car, and it's like, you got to just, you can stand inside your car and then crank your stereo, or just listen to it in open air from everybody else's stereo. But it's weird because you're getting the time delays and all that oh, stuff. Wow. So there's some super heavy duty challenges to it. Um, not just my end from the production, like the house production, these guys that have put those systems together last year really quickly. Um, you know, a, a, a bunch of those dates that I, I did, they, you know, especially the one I was the uh, OLG stage and it was a uh, PRG was doing the production for that. And there's all guys that I know, uh, you know, personally, and they, they just knocked it out of the park. Um, yeah, Eric and Randy there, and the PRG, they're great guys. Um, yeah, so they made it, guys like them and others uh, made it as smooth as possible for guys like me that are just walking into this going, what the fuck is this going to be, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, and ter- almost terrified, like, am I going to make this work? How's that mix going to sound on uh, FM broadcast? Because there's, uh, you know, time delays and just like and, and uh, FM compression because over those radio signals just naturally – like there's compression that's, you know, that I have to deal with. Right. Um, you know, so it totally changes my mix perspective, uh, you know, um, in, in uh, these bad boys right here. And uh, luckily we made it work. And, you know, I'm at least going into this summer, knowing how it's going uh, you know, to all play out and roll. And I'm not, I don't have those nerves. So I'm just, I just want to go out and do it, you know. Yeah. You've got <laughs> the experience now. You can just make it happen. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. It's uh, really interesting seeing how people have adapted to the new world 
yeah. uh, all the different changes. Like we've talked to comedians, we've talked to uh, a lot of different people from different genres so far, and everybody has their own way of bringing themselves up. Um, have you had moments where you're just like, you know, screw this, I'm done, people suck? Like, how um, do you get yourself out of a funk if you're ever in that kind of mindset? <laughs> I've had a few of those. You know, if we want to get uh, crazy deep here, uh, just uh, there was one time, I don't even know if I want to see what true it was. But I had like a full emotional breakdown. Um, I was a little overworked. We were um, the schedule was pretty grueling. Uh, I took on too much, um, but you don't know how much is too much until you take on too much. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, you know, so it can be pretty grueling, um, and you're and you're dealing with a lot of. Uh, you know, you got your crew, you got your bus drivers, you got your bands, you got your promoters, you got management, you got the accountant, you got everybody on your back. Like, you know, um, you know, and if uh, there's no leeway there and there's, uh, you know, if there's any, any, like, uh, uh, you know, break in the chain anywhere there, including myself, if I have broken my link, you know, because I'm, uh, you know, I've done that before. Well, um, <laughs> it can get real hairy, right? Because you're stuck out and like in, on a tour bus in the middle of nowhere or, or whatever, trying to get to the next gig. And, you know, it's just, uh, um, yeah, and you can feel you can feel pretty alone and, uh, you know, it, could, it gets pretty funky. Um, I will tell you my experience, and I'm lucky for this, the main, the few times that I've had like a real shit kicker of a time and I was just like, how am I going to get out of this? Um, mostly and I'm not discounting any band members, but uh, my crew. Um, Cause those are the guys that you're really, you're in the trenches with the crew, with the band, but you're, you're the, the war, you know, those guys that are standing shoulder to shoulder with you are your, your crew. Um, and I've had multiple guys, um, you know, uh, talk me out of some crazy funks, you know, and it's almost a little embarrassing at times, right? Cause I'm, I'm supposed to be the goddamn tour manager. I'm the guy that is supposed to be solving the problems and getting guys out of funks and helping them. Right. Uh, and I have been that guy. Right. So when I feel, uh, when I'm feeling pretty uh, shitty about things and I'm having, you know, you know, one of my guitar attacks, you know, talking me out of that. Um, it's, I'm grateful. Once I get over the, that whole thing of like embarrassment, you know, because it just happens. Right. Once I, and I kicked that to the curb pretty quickly. I'm just super thankful for, for all of them. And I've had uh, the su supreme luck of having ex amazing crews on basically every, uh, yeah, with every band and every tour I've ever done. Like uh, there That's has been, I have not, I've not had one asshole, like not a single one, you know? Um, Could that also be because you pick your spots? Like you pick where you're going to work. You pick who oh, you're going to work absolutely. for. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, for sure. Um, and this is the thing you're going to, uh, you're going to run into that with, uh, these type of level of bands that I've had the pleasure of working with. Right. Because, you know, these are guys that have like, I may be just coming into say with the big rec guys, like Shaner has been with Ian for he's Ian's guitar tech, been with Ian for like 13 years. Right. So it's just like, you know, uh, you know, you just know that, that, that really, that's good. I know, you know, you know, if Ian's okay with this guy, you know, and I'm just meeting him. And it's like he's one of my best friends now, and almost right away when we met. But uh, I just knew it was good, so I, I'm lucky that way. You know, uh, these guys are all tried and tested and true before I even commit. That's so, awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's that's amazing that you've had. Uh, I mean, some of those experiences. It's funny because I mean, so many of us as as you know, young young kids when we got into the music, you sort of think, yeah, I want to be a rock star, right? And uh, oh, for sure. You know, yeah. So 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 many, you know, I mean, I it's uh it's unreal. And then you know, quick quickly realizing a guy a guy like myself that I, I didn't have the talent, I didn't have the drive, you know, uh, right. to do to do that. But uh, to actually be on your end of it from shifting from uh, being a musician to actually being that front of house, uh, running the front of house and doing uh, doing what you do. Uh, really to, to entertain us as the, as the consumer. That's yeah. just, uh, that's amazing that uh, I love it. Yeah. Pe people don't think about how much, uh, uh, how much, how important that is to them. Like one of the things people talk about, you know, oh, I want to travel. I want to do this. I want to do that. I miss live music. 
I yeah. just I love I love going to shows. I mean, I bought a camera specifically because it'll fit in my pocket and I can take it into a show and I can get great pictures with it from exactly. wherever I am in a venue. Yeah. I, I bought it. Brian sold that to me, and I, and I had a very short list of specifications that it needed to meet so that yeah. I could take take good pictures in, in a, a live venue. Um, I've been I've been actually lucky. I was at a Finger Eleven uh, True show uh, mm -hmm. in Barrie. Um, I think it was at the ranch and Barry, it was the rock 95 birthday thing. Oh yeah. Uh, and I emailed rock 95 and they're like, yeah, yeah, bring, bring your camera. So I brought my full on Nikon D750, big lens, the whole bit. I got some great nice. shots of that show. Nice. Yeah. Fing finger 11 just, just blew me away. I, Those I, guys are the most photogenic yeah. band I've ever, yeah. uh, not just worked with, like seen, like yeah. it, it's, it's really, they have such a neat dynamic, right? Like, yeah, yeah as you can attest to that, that you got, you know, Scott, he's got his presence up there and he moves and stuff, but there's something super sly about him. Sean is just like, you know, bass and just laying it down. And then you got these two pogo sticks on either <laughs> side, like with Rick and James, right? Yeah. And they're just, and they're animals. I, yeah. I, I love them because my days of like performing and stuff, that's, that's what I would do. It's like guitars up here and everywhere. And then just, you know, uh, I just, I love that. You're, it's with you know putting on a show for the fans, yeah. right? Those guys fucking give her. I love that band. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's awesome. I miss playing. Oh, I miss playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had hair. I had like yeah. big hair. I'd be playing. My hair would be flying all over the place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I miss playing. Yeah. But it is a blast, man. There's there's yeah. nothing like it. It's definitely uh, nothing like it. You know, yeah. like I said, like doing live sound and stuff, and being in front of house and being there with the band. That's that's why I do because it's really close to, if not the same feeling. You know, okay. so when I'm there and there's like, you know, 10,000 people in the arena, you know, in and all around me, I'm just stuck there in the middle. I'm in a little front of house island. And I just I feel like this, like the serenity because it's just me. You know, we got a band there and then the fans and they're all having a blast. And I, I feel so, you know, responsible for this awesome time, I'm like part of the little piece of the puzzle. Right. But that responsibility, responsibility feels you know, heavy, but it's just a little piece, but it, it's, it's, it is so much, you know, to For me sure. and, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's a blast. I, there's real no feeling like that ever. Yeah. Anything yeah else. That's awesome. Question for you. Yeah. Um, I've been married for 25 years coming yeah. up soon and I know you have as well. Yeah. Oh, I've been married for just my, uh, you know, 13, 14, 15 years, something like that. But then with, with my wife, since we were 18, so, right, so 25, 26 years. Yeah. She's obviously been with you throughout this entire thing. Yeah. Um, Everything. She's okay with you doing a tour. She's like supportive. How has, how, how has her support and your family support in general really helped you get to where you are today? Well, that's to not overstate it. It's everything, you know, <laughs> I guess like I don't want to like, cause there's multiple factors to how, why that works, but just that alone, you know, her being, cool with that and having that trust in me and that's the thing is because i started touring well when she threw her together already like 15 years before i started doing any kind of touring and stuff and being away from home a lot like i'm talking weeks and months at a time um and she just you know what it is it's just her uh having that respect of that of that passion because she knows it she sees it in me daily you know um you know so yeah her support's been everything to it you know uh Cause I could just imagine if I was coming home after two months and it was, you know, weeks of, I don't know if I can do this and trying to, to build all that back up. I, you know, I don't know how I'd handle that. You know, I'd either, well, I would, I'd either be not touring or I'd be divorced, <laughs> you, know, if you, want, you know, um, and I don't want either of those very much so. That's right. Um, well, I'm glad, I'm glad that, that yeah. you have that strength and you have that support. It means yeah. the world to me. And I know Mark is in the same boat. For sure. Um, one of the things that's really cool about our dynamic having all four hosts is we've all been in long-term relationships. We're all somewhat married and, you know, yeah, being able to have that to fall back on. It's just, it makes a huge difference. It really, really does. It's like, yeah. say it's, it's everything, you know, it's the, it's the, the catalyst to you being able to, to, to do all that stuff because like, and do that stuff correctly. Cause that's a thing. If you're getting, you know, uh, you're coming home and you're getting nagged on and beat up on and it's just stressful and you don't know if you're going to make it work, you know, going out on that run, where's your, where's your mindset? That's right. It's, right? True. it's not there. So it's just, it's a double whammy. Not only are you stress the fuck at home, you're, you're going out in the road 
you're not going to, you're not going to perform at your job, especially if you've got a high like level intensity job, like, like you know, to manage in front of house or, or, or whatever you're doing. Right. You know, absolutely. Um, taking on yeah. kind of like some double duty stuff, you know, uh, there's, there's no way I, I just wouldn't be able to do it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I, and I get that. I'm, I'm in. A, I, I travel. I think less than I did before. But in my, uh, in my new, my new role, um, I still travel for work. And and there, there has to be an understanding there. There, there needs to be. Uh, to your point, there's got to be trust that that you're going to behave while you're while you're out there. And then Absolutely. there's got to be, uh, there's got to be uh, respect as well. You know, respecting yeah. that that when you come back, you know, things things didn't stop. You know, when exactly. when, uh, when you get home, yeah. right. So, and I know your dad as well, um, so I've I've actually had the privilege of meeting your wife and, and your daughter. I think I knew your wife from from Newmarket, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but Newmarket your daughter I, I, I met I met you at the uh, the Christmas tree bonfire there in Innisfil. Oh yeah, at the church uh, there, at, yeah, at the over church, in, yeah, yeah, so, in Alcona. Yeah. yeah, so I think I think the, I was just looking for the pictures. I think they're on my other computer, but uh, oh yeah, but yeah. So that was that was fun, you know. I mean, you're you you're obviously you've got the family and you've got the support of your. Your wife and how does how does your daughter take it when uh, when you're off on the on the road? She's pretty. She's great. Um, you know, obviously that uh, last big one going out with Big Rack uh, that was a long one. It was three months. Um, that's the longest I'd ever been away from her. Longest before that was like six six seven weeks. So it was kind of like double the time. That was a really hard one leaving. So there was some tears at the bus stop yeah. that morning, both of us, a um, little bit. <laughs> I got a great selfie of that day, right? The sun was shining, big smiles, and so it got me through the the tour. But uh, nice. I just think, especially at, at this age that she's at, um, I think it would have been a lot harder when she was four or five years old. But now she's she's twelve. She just turned twelve. So when we did that tour, she was ten, and kind of just she's seen everything and understanding that you know, uh, daddy's been you know a musician his whole life and. And, you know, he used to, um, you know, you perform and he's done recording studio, done live sound. And you know, he just, she knows that's just part of who I am. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just uh, when you just grow up or grow up with that, I think uh, it's, it gets instilled in them uh, that that's just, you know, it's not that you want to be away from them. It's just that this is your passion. It's your job. That's what puts, you know, bread on the table. And, uh, you know, and it's, what you got to do. You know, she's, she obviously, you know, we miss each other like crazy. Right. But, you know, it's, uh, it's not like, I don't think that I'm, you know, making any wounds or scars there because of it. Yeah. Like she's, yeah. she's a brilliant little kid. She's, you know, perseverant and strong, like, uh, is, is all the health she is. So That's you know, awesome. I'm lucky. I'm lucky as hell. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So we're, uh, we're coming up to a point where we're going to start winding the show down now. Yeah. Um, so we have a few a few questions um, for you guys, okay. uh, for you. Uh, and and the first one the first one that I, I want to ask you is um, like as uh, Brian and I are both photographers, so uh, a lot of times there's sort of that cliche uh, question, what's in what's in your bag? Where we talk about the gear, but it's not always about the gear. Um, what is that one thing that you to do to do your job, um, uh, work in front of house or or whatever it is you're doing? What's that one thing that you always take with you uh, when you do your job? Tool of the trade. My laptop. <laughs> but I know I know it sounds you know, but especially TM front of house, like I, I'm glued to the thing. Um, plus, I use it to record every like when I'm in a tour, I record multi-track, record the shows, so I can do virtual sound checks and stuff. So um, maybe I spoke too soon, but my my you know my uh, biggest tools are these two uh, little guys right here. You know, yeah. I'm very lucky uh, that. Uh, um, just, I guess is what I've done with music and, and recording and being a musician and stuff like that. Like I just, I have a little gift of, um, my ears. Like I, I can really hear frequency and pitch extremely well and know how to balance that, you know, quickly once I know how to use set gear, you know, mixing console or whatever. Um, you know, so those are the two biggest tools. And then, yeah. And then the, then the laptop, you know, if you're, you're asking me for preferences for actual gear and stuff like that, you know, like a, Obviously, I have preferences at front of house for yeah. consoles and stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 No, I, I think Perfect. the the hearing, and yeah. this is like Mark's Mark's tool was his creativity. Yeah, you know, just thinking outside the box and, and just being creative. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, we it, it's we all have our own little thing. For me, it was a Leatherman. I know it sounds stupid, but my Leatherman right. is a tool that I use for everything. It just I couldn't get through the day without it. Exactly. So. You know, I used to have always one on my hip when I was before I started actually touring. Because when I was touring, just doing sound, we'd have like guitar techs and drum techs would have the Leathermans. But when I was just uh, you know just doing gigs or doing calls down at ACC or whatever. Yeah, there was a leather in my pocket every time. It's, I think it's on the list of requirements of what, like, like IATSE, you know, I, uh, you know, just uh, stagehand union and stuff. It's on that list. It's so, like, you Perfect. know, you need a C wrench, you need a leather in, you need, you know, so it's definitely one of those tools. There you, know? you go. I, I, I might even qualify for being on. Right. Yeah. Well, you can be you just walk in with one of those and pair of, uh, yeah. you know, uh, green tagged uh, work boots, you know, with the steel toes and a hard hat, and you're good to go. Cool. Yeah, good to know. Good to know. Well, <laughs> yeah. Get into shows for free. <laughs> <laughs> I get that way right. with my camera, though. You know, just walk in with a big camera. They all think you're a professional. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 Go on through. So the next question, uh, and we talked a lot about this at the top of the show, um, but what what's your jam? What are you listening to right now? What gets you moving and and uh, gets your day started? Um, listen to right now. Um, uh, Right now, my, my favorite band, and they've been around for a while, uh, is Gorgira. Um, okay. Gorgira. A, a new record. A new one, yeah. And it is slamming. Um, yeah. And they're getting some huge accolades. I think they I built, um, debuted at number one on Billboard. Yeah. Um, and that's crazy for such a – like, they are a pretty slaying heavy metal band, right? Yeah, they're pretty heavy, um, yeah. Yeah, they're extremely heavy. Um, you know uh, – yeah, I just you know it's funny, and I, go, I talk about my wife a lot, but that's okay. I always go back to to her when I when I, when I get a question like that. It's like I don't really listen to a lot of music at home, right? Okay. Um, which is it's, I know you think this might be strange, but um, I think cause I've been so surrounded by it. It was my job, and like it'd be you know listening to PA's at 105 dB for you know like a week straight, and I I really like quiet i really enjoy like peace and quiet um and it just it helps me check my thoughts and you know not necessarily meditate or anything but just quiet things down and uh and kind of uh reflect on you know, what my week's been like and what do i want to do the next week and into the future and stuff and i i like like my wife's got the tunes cranked up and she's cleaning up or doing stuff around the house me like it's, it's dead quiet you hear like the cat's little footsteps, you know, around the house. Right? Yeah. Oh, um, you're a cat guy too. Nice. Yeah, I got uh, I got a little cat, Isabella, and I got a, a year and a half old Rottweiler, a Piper. Um, wow. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, yeah. She uh, kind of always wanted a Rottweiler. And we were waiting until we were, got our uh, yard fence. We waited a couple of years and stuff, and so we finally got our little Rottweiler, and she's a doll, and you know it's fun so yeah i got the you know the wife the kid the rottweiler the cat you know yeah. and everything so, is so yeah. drastically different though like you go from yeah. 106 db music to silence and you go from cat to rottweiler and you go <laughs> from like heavy heavy metal music to yeah. silence it's that like, is me yeah. i am full I, if i'm not doing 99 miles an hour i'm not doing shit you know that's so cool <laughs> that is I me there's that. no yeah. there's no middle like i'm all i'm they're all in or i'm all the fuck out that's it. You know, that's just my personality. I, I don't, I don't wait around in the gray area very much with, with anything. Wait, well, hey, that's know? gotten you to where you are. So it's it working. works, yeah. I guess. You, you know, go. it's maybe not the perfect system, but it works. Yeah. I guess for me, that's all that matters, right? You know, absolutely. So, yeah. And then uh, the last one, and it was on the. Um, we we talked about it. I don't know if you'll have anything for us, but we like to uh, have our guests issue a challenge to uh, to the viewers. So. Whether it's a uh, you know some sort of a any sort of a challenge, whether it be a personal challenge, a creative challenge, uh, or uh, any anything at all, if, if you've got something you'd like to to put forward to the to the listeners and viewers of, of what would you challenge them to do or or to to strive towards? Um, okay, forgetting the. Uh... Does it have to be like right in the creative realm or anything? It could be anything, anything at all. Nope. I and some that's helped me this year, especially during COVID, uh, and I haven't stuck to it every day. But a lot of days I have take five minutes to sit in absolute peace and quiet and silence and just totally erase all your thoughts, right? And just sit in absolute solitude for five minutes a day. Um, it's done wonders for me. Like it's I could come home in a funk 
and I just, and it, and it's, uh, you know, because uh, I know it's the triggers, I'm like, oh, I just, you know, I'll tell my daughter, and my wife, it's like, I'm just going to be in the office for 10 minutes or whatever. You know, sometimes I can play guitar for a couple of minutes, but I always take a few minutes and, you know, it sounds a little bit uh, hippie and stuff, but I got like a salt lamp in here and I got a diffuser and lights out and I just sit and I try not to think about nothing. <laughs> That's you time. Think about, yeah. you know, yeah. these for a few it's minutes. It's, it's like a reset. It's just like, you know, like, you know, when electronics not working, it's like, you know, you call customer support. Hey, just turn it off. Let it sit for 10 seconds and then turn it back on again and see what happens. You know how many times that's actually worked for me? Like, I, with like yeah. a piece of, or a piece of gear or an amplifier. Like, yeah. I, I, I can't, it's crazy how much that's yeah. worked. It's, it sounds it's like a joke. It's not. It, it, it is, you're absolutely, you're 100% correct on that yeah. one. Um, in my previous role uh, with Shoppers Drug Mart, that was, I used to answer my phone. Hello, Mark speaking. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Right. And, uh, yeah. That's, you know. that's it. And it works most of the time, but you're right. It also works for us. Uh, I, I yeah. do a, a similar thing. I do, uh, I, I call it a mindfulness thing, a little, a little yeah. meditation. I did it with a dog this afternoon. I sat on the stairs with a dog for five minutes um, yeah. in between phone calls and just sat there. So I think that's yeah. actually yeah. really important, especially these days when you have so many pressures that you're never, ever, you've never, ever had to deal with. Yeah. You don't, you're not equipped to deal with the pressures of COVID and all the other things that are going on right now. And everything is changing 100% every other day. Totally. So to be able to, <laughs> to know that about yourself, to just be able to sit and just time out. Yeah. yeah. Time for I mean, me. That, uh, it's, it's weird. I, I got on to that. Like I, I got a, from my years of loading trucks and stuff early on and all that, I got a pretty bad back, a couple of crushed discs. Ooh. So I started getting into uh, – um, uh, yoga a bit because it's obviously that's the best recovery for anything that's kind of like muscle joint ligament you know base anything like that right and so uh, I don't do it as much as I should right uh, when, when I'm feeling good I don't do it very much but it's just like I feel it coming on and I'll I'll do it uh, you know uh, like every couple of days for like 10 15 minutes at least right and then just through that whole process and trying to find some different moves and stuff to do obviously it's going to link in with that whole kind of like mindfulness thing and those little websites and all that you know but they um you know yoga and mindfulness and meditating and all that so you know um that's the thing I, i'm not you know guru guy that kind of passes this every day you know don't let me fool you and i'm pretty sure that you're not fooled but when i need it and i call on it i know it's there it's in my head to actually do it and uh it's helped me a lot yeah that's cool you know, just awesome you know, it's sometimes the start of the day, you know, but most times like, you know, when you've gone through a day and some little funkiness has happened, it's just like, okay, those thoughts stop, you know, and that's it. You're not going to let them, you know, take over that uh, real estate in your brain. And then you just start your evening about, you know, some other stuff and, and, and try to keep the noise low and go from there. Right. I like that. I had an experience awesome. the other day where I should have done that. Yeah. I didn't. I stewed on it. I stewed on it. I was stewing yep. on it until about 10 minutes ago. Yep. <laughs> totally, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, some I, people's reactions these days are just throwing me with for such a loop. I don't understand yeah. how people are acting the way they are. And, yeah. you know, when you work retail and you're dealing with these people that are oh, totally in retail, Jesus. flipping out because yeah. you're asking them to get in their car so you can help them. I mean, yeah. Ugh. Oh, um, yeah. It's a nightmare. I've seen it just in my little bits of going out to the grocery store or or whatever, right? You know, yeah. you see, you know, a guy walking in, just sort of the, it's like nice chin diaper, bud. The know? chin diaper, yes, right. Like, get on your damn mask on. It's like, I don't care that you don't believe in COVID or whatever. It's just like, just respect you know. who you're dealing with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah. It's, it's out there. You know, that people are dying. Um, wear the fucking mask, you know? Yeah. It's just, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just, wear the mask. Yeah. Oh, wow. the, the biggest yeah. the biggest tell is that nobody's been sick like if you've unless you had covid but i mean nobody's nobody had colds and flus and yeah flu and, seemed to like disappear yeah. hey, i didn't get yeah. sick this year like nope. yeah. Yeah, not even a sniffle i normally do but yeah masks yeah. hand sanitizing staying apart you know yeah it works yeah. but you know people you know i what my my favorite thing to tell people is you know when you think about it they say well the government's trying to repress us no we are their product Every yeah. business has to have a product, and without us working, without us making money, um, they can't tax us. Yeah. So if you don't, if you don't, if you don't pay tax, then they don't make money, and yeah. and that's the long and short of it. So when your product is not working, it's 
you're yeah. done, right? So yeah. And here's the thing: it's just crazy. like it's probably a, there's a lot of stuff, especially within government, that we don't know about. But are you, oh, for sure, you know, you're guessing at it. Like people are just yeah. putting theories out there. There's so much, and you're getting flooded with all this bullshit all the time. And yeah, you know what? One of them might be right. They might be doing some pretty nasty shit. You know, but really, at the end of the day, yeah. it's like. Are you going to lead that charge to find to really find out? You know, like, and are you really ever going to get the truth, or can you just save yourself a whole world of stress and everybody else around you? Right? You can have your opinions. You know, they're like assholes. Everybody's got one. You're allowed mm -hmm. to have it. You know, but just you know, and go with the process for the most part for the greater good of what you know of what's going on right now. Because really, at the end of the day, there are people dying. A lot yeah. of people dying. Yeah. So just yeah. go with the program. Have some patience. Have you know some common human decency, and let's just get by this. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Well said. Get your mask. Yeah. Wear the mask. Get the vaccine. Yeah. And book me today. So uh, yeah. you know, you see, it's, it's funny. It's, it's, what a great life. She's like, you're you're eligible now. I just saw them whatever on the news. It's like I'm gonna book you in. I'm like, okay, yeah. thanks. Right. So <laughs> nice. Keep going. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good for you. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Well, we'll wrap this up. And, cool. Uh, this is fun, guys. Very much. Thank you very much, Dan. It's, it's been a it's been a great show. I'm I'm sad that Aurora and Ryan couldn't be here with us, but uh, it's, all good. It's, it's been a great show. You've uh, you've given us a, a little sneak peek into uh, you know what it's like behind, behind the, the scenes, scenes at a, a rock yeah. show. Um, which is pretty cool. I, I'd seen a little of it because I was a yeah. security guard for for several years doing. Exactly. Doing I remember yeah. and seeing things, but uh, but yeah, I, I you know didn't get on the the tour part of it where you're getting on the bus and and getting to the next venue the next day. I was just another mm -hmm. guy in a blue shirt. So yeah. Yeah, I was I was just a noisy drummer in a band called Forty Cases Later. So that ought to right. tell you something. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's Perfect. a great band name, actually. I like. It was that. awesome. Yeah. We had a great time. I yeah. could totally picture. Uh, yeah. You know what you guys are doing while you're jamming, <laughs> and you would be yeah. exactly correct. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of uh, craft beers and such, so uh, yeah. nice. sounds great to me. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. All right, excellent. Well, thanks very much, Dan. And, thank you guys. Uh, this is fun. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being thank here. You no much. problem. And uh, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, if you're listening, uh, please uh, hit that little like, subscribe button, um, subscribe to our channel, and uh, we've got lots more great content. As I said, this is episode ten. Uh, so we're 10 episodes in, uh, 11 if you count episode zero, but uh, that's just us talking to each other. So, but uh, no, it's been, uh, been a great conversation and uh, really appreciate you being here, Dan. Thanks very much. Right Thanks guys. Right on. Stay Thanks. cool. And Night everybody everyone. who's watching and listening, remember mental health is real. Uh, take care of yourselves. Remember to take that pause. That's great, great challenge that Dan gave us. Um, just take a time out. Give Do yourself it. time to process what's going on before you react. All right. Thanks, Dan. Mark, right well done, you. sir. Good night. Even though we didn't have Ryan and, and uh, Aurora here, we still had a great time. It was. It was a lot of fun. It was the first time I've actually done a full like podcast, like video podcast ever. I'm yeah. glad it was with us. Awesome. A lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. Good All time. right. Take right care, guys. everybody.